Well, one of my favorite books is by the great teacher Ram Das. Yes. He wrote in the 60s a book called Be Here Now. But in actual fact, my favorite book of his, which he wrote about seven or eight years, is a book called Still Here. Mm -hmm. And that really, oh, very that really formed my life in many ways because he really talked about our attachment to the body and the impermanence of life. Very Buddhistic teachings, but come mm -hmm. from a very grounded point of view and how we need to honor the process of our death, you know, people are so afraid of talking about death in the mm -hmm. Western world. But for me, and one of the things I learned through Ram Dass and other teachers, was that until we really make peace with the fact that we're all going to, these bodies are going to perish one of these days, and that we are much more than these physical bodies, that until we really own that and get comfortable with the concept of death, almost like, as one monk put it, inviting death into the living room for tea, so to speak, <laughs> that you become that comfortable with the reality of your own demise, which is so difficult for most mm -hmm. people because it is the fear behind all fears. Right. And Ram Das talks about this extensively in his book because he was going through, he was recovering from a stroke that he had. Oh, and man. so he's, his writing is just so raw and so real and really, mm -hmm. I, I've underlined that book so yeah. many times. You know, the kind of book where yes, every line is right. highlighted. And and you're I, like, why like, am I even highlighting right, the whole book thing that you is. just read? I too, you know, I take this book out all the time and I reread past Passages, and so it's been an amazing book for me. Oh, phenomenal. There's one more book. There was a book called Who Dies by Stephen Levine. Oh, yeah. And it's just one of my favorite all-time books also. He also is a, is a wonderful Buddhist teacher and um, de de deals with similar themes that in order to live well, we have to be able to get in touch well, not in touch. We have to become mm -hmm. comfortable with the reality of our demise. And, you know, I have people who say, Angela, that's so pessimistic or right. so people morbid. People hear it morbid, but yeah. it's actually not. No, but, because then they'll say to me, but you seem so happy. How can you be happy when you're talking about death? And I'm saying the moment that you get in touch with the reality that one of these days you will not have this, this life anymore, mm -hmm. that every day becomes even more precious that you will not let a day go by that you don't find something to celebrate, to be grateful for. And so if that isn't the greatest message in order to wake up, to stop sleeping, sleepwalking through life, I don't know what is. Right. So, you know. I think waking up is really the key term it's, there, It's too. waking up. Death as a means Just of waking up. It is. And in a way, right. it's like every day is the possibility to wake up and be born anew. Absolutely. Open your eyes. Open your eyes.